How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donahue here once again. This time we're gonna take a look at the first law of thermodynamics and state functions. So our objectives will be to describe processes as endothermic or exothermic and calculate changes in internal energy when given Q and W, meaning the heat changes and work, as well as to describe what state functions are and give examples. So let's start with talking about energy. Turns out energy is conserved. What does that even mean? Well, energy can be transferred from one system to another, right? If I got some potential energy, maybe I can transfer it into another system in the form of kinetic by giving off heat, or maybe I can use some of that kinetic energy to do some work and turn it into potential. But the takeaway is that energy is never lost or gained. It's only transferred. You can't create energy. You can't destroy energy. And that's the first law of thermodynamics. Energy is never gained or lost, but converted from one form to another. That's it. So let's talk about internal energy. When we say internal energy, we're talking about the sum of all the forms of energy, kinetic and potential, in a system. So maybe I'm talking about a water molecule as my system. Well, what kind of energy could that water molecule have? It, it might have some uh, you know, kinetic, there's vibrations going on, maybe around the bond they're moving, maybe there's some stretching going on. There's also the bond itself is associated with a certain amount of energy. So when we're talking about internal energy, we're talking about all forms of energy for a system. And we use the capital E to denote internal energy. Now changes in internal energy, just like any other change, it's the difference between the final and the initial. So E final minus E initial will give you your change in energy. Typically, we're more concerned with the delta E than we are what the value for E is, which is good because most of the times you can't really even get what the total internal energy is, but you can easily measure changes in energy with changes to the system. So for example, if I started with, you know, H2O, a liquid down here, and then I invested internal energy into it to break it up into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, I'd have my E final being greater than my E initial, which means my delta E would be positive, right? We'd have a bigger number minus a smaller number, you end up with a positive. But if I was going the other way, which is in my opinion, more fun, uh, and took hydrogen gas and oxygen gas and combusted them to create H2O liquid, well, that's the opposite. My final energy is less than my initial energy, so I'm gonna end up with the negative delta E. Right, the my com my elements, my compound is my system. My hydrogen and my oxygen, that's my system. And in this scenario, when they came together to make a water molecule, they lost internal energy and they gave it off with usually a pretty impressive explosion, which is why I like it. So delta E, work and heat, how are they related? Well, energy can be transferred to and from a system in the form of heat or work. Right, It can either give off heat, absorb heat, or it could do work or have work done to it. So delta E is equal to Q plus W, where Q is the heat exchange between the system and its surroundings. So if heat is gained or absorbed by the system, then we have a positive value for Q. And if heat is lost or evolved by the system to the surroundings, then we have a negative Q. All right, And W is work done on or by the system. So if we have work done on or to our system, like we're doing something to our system, we're working on it, then uh, we end up with a positive value for W. Whereas if the system is doing work, then it's gonna have a negative value for W. It's losing that energy in the form of work. So let's talk about an example. Let's say we have H2O and O2 in a cylinder with a movable piston and it reacts forming H2O. The process loses 1,250 joules of heat to the surroundings and moves the piston up doing 620 joules of work. What is the change in the internal energy of the system? Well, let's talk about Q and W before we figure out delta E. Well, what's happening is like here I got my oxygen atoms, so I have my hydrogen atoms, and then they're gonna react, right? Boop, forming water molecules. And it's saying that this is giving off heat and then it's also causing that piston to rise, so it's doing work. So we have work leaving our compounds and doing it. So I know, all right, this 1250 joules is gonna have to be a minus because it says loses that much heat. So delta E equals negative one, two, five, zero joules of heat being lost. And then it says 
moves a piston and is doing that much work. So I know the system is losing that much energy because it's doing work. When you do work, you're expending energy. So it's going to be minus 620 joules. And when I add those together, I get 1870 joules to the negative. So that's how many joules are being lost. The chain, the delta E would be negative 1870 joules. Endothermic and exothermic processes. Endothermic just means that it, you know, heat is going in. So endo, think if you ever heard of an endoscope, you know, they go inside of things, right? So endo means inside therm or thermic means heat. Think about your thermals, thermal underwears or your thermometer. It's measuring heat. So when we're talking about endothermic, we have heat flowing into a system. For example, melting of water. So here I have some solid water. If I add heat to it, and it's absorbing that heat, then it's going to melt. So melting would be endothermic. It's absorbing heat. Exothermic processes. Exo means outside. Things like exoskeleton. Like bugs have exoskeletons. They have skeleton on the outside of them. And thermic, again, means heat. So we have heat flowing out of the system. So the opposite, like freezing of water. So like, all right, this water has a certain amount of heat to it. If it gets rid of it, then it can freeze. So you got to remove the heat from that water in order to freeze it. That makes freezing an exothermic process. State functions. All right, here I got a globe with a big old arrow pointing to it. Why do I have that for state functions? Well, a property of a system that only depends on its conditions or state is called a state function. So it doesn't matter how it ended up in that state or how it got to be in that state. It only depends on being in that state. So for example, you're at X point in this video. That's a state function. It doesn't matter if you were watching it forward like you normally do or double speed or if you were playing it in reverse super slow-mo. It doesn't matter how you got to this point in the video. This being at this point in the video is a state function right? So some other examples. Jackson, Wyoming, one of my favorite places, has an elevation of 6,237 feet above sea level. In Middletown, New York, I guess also one of my favorite places, uh, but I'd rather be in Jackson. Anyway, has an elevation of 520 feet. So state functions based on this information. Well, if I were traveling from Middletown to Jackson, my change in elevation would be a plus 5,717 feet. That is a state function. It doesn't matter how I get there, the difference between my starting elevation and my ending elevation is a state function. My elevation at Jackson would be a state function. It doesn't matter how I got there. That's what my elevation is. It only matters that that's where I'm at. Same thing with my elevation in Middletown. It doesn't matter how I got to Middletown. My elevation of 520 feet only depends on where I'm at. Things that are not state functions. Well, the distance that I traveled going from Middletown, right? So we got Middletown and I think Jackson is like kind of over here ish, right? Somewhere over there. So how I get from there? Well, maybe I took the highway. Maybe I decided to go through Canada and say, hey, to our Northern neighbors and then come down. Maybe I, I went all the way around. I didn't want to go there right away. And I just went all the way around the path that I took and the distance that I traveled is not a state function because it does depend on how I got there. The amount of work that I put into traveling, that is not a state function, right? If I took the most direct route versus, you know, a roundabout way, stopping at every thing, every little pit stop, that's going to change how much work that I've done. Both depend on your route taken. So let's talk about some more chemical systems, right? Internal energy is a state function. For example, 100 grams of water at 25 degrees Celsius has a specific amount of internal energy. It doesn't matter if that water started off as ice and we melted it to get to that point, or if it was steam and we condensed it from the vapor to get to that point, it doesn't matter. It has a specific amount of internal energy at that state. So that's a state function. All right. So example, state functions, right? Elevation check. That's a state function. Uh, temperature check. Doesn't matter how we got there. It just matters what it is. Internal energy, change in internal energy, all those are state functions. Things that are not would be the route taken, right? That That's going to depend on what path you took. Q, the heat flow, that depends on what path you took. And the work done also depends on the path you took.
So how can delta E be a state function but not Q and W? We already said that you know delta E is equal to Q plus W. How can we get a state function if Q is not a state function and W is not a state function? Well, let's let's talk about it. If we had a battery, it's got a certain amount of internal energy, E, right? So we could short circuit it. I could just go, you know what? I'm going to connect a wire to the other end and all of that energy is going to be lost as heat, right? All of that's going to be given off as heat. Or maybe I'm like, you know what? I got a new toy. I got a drone that I want to play with and I plug it in. Well, that drone is going to do a bunch of work. It's going to be flying around and it's going to be using that energy to like, you know, take pictures and harass my neighbors and fly into the wall more, most likely and crash. So we have a lot of that energy being converted into work and then some of that energy being lost as heat. It's still giving off the same amount of energy. So the delta E is the same, but because it took different paths, the amount of Q, the amount of heat is different and the amount of work W is different depending on those scenarios. So because they're path dependent, it, they're not a state function. But the overall change in E is the same. It doesn't matter what route we took. The change in energy is the same. That is a state function. All right, summarize. Can you describe the processes? The process. Can you describe processes as endothermic or exothermic and calculate changes in internal energy when given Q and W? And can you also describe what a state function is and give examples? I hope so. Okay, bye.